and then we'll talk about the parallel lines. Okay, so first of all, on your paper there, we're going to fill in the blank. Uh, vertical angles, we need to understand the concept of vertical angles. Uh, vertical angles share a common vertex. So it's kind of like they meet at this point right in the middle. Okay, A and B on both of these diagrams, they share that point right there in the middle where those two lines intersect. Uh, does anybody know what the relationship is between their measure? What does it look like it is? Do they look like they're equal or not equal? Equal. They have the same measure. Okay, angle A is congruent to angle B in both of those um, diagrams, and for that matter, the other two angles, let's label them C and D, those are also vertical angles, and they are also equal to each other. Okay, so A is equal to B, and C is equal to D in both of these pictures. <clears throat> so, those are vertical angles. We also have what we call adjacent angles. Adjacent angles, which I think we mentioned the word adjacent yesterday. Adjacent means to be next to. So adjacent angles share a side and vertex. They share a side and a vertex. Um, so you'll see in both of those diagrams, A and B, they share that side going right down the middle. And then they have that common point, that vertex, right there. Now, adjacent angles don't necessarily have a relationship <clears throat> in terms of their measure. It's usually uh, just that they're side by side. Sometimes they're complementary, which means that uh, they form 90 degree angles. Sometimes they're supplementary, meaning that they form 180 degrees but it's not always the case. So we're just going to leave adjacent the way it is right there. Now, a linear pair is a special case of an adjacent angle. Okay, so uh, they share a vertex and a side, just like adjacent angles. They are adjacent angles, and they form uh, a 180-degree angle, or what we also call a straight angle. Okay, you may see that terminology thrown in there somewhere. So they form a 180 degree angle or a straight angle if it's a linear pair. It forms a line. <clears throat> okay, may not be able to, some of these might be a little tiny, so we may need to kind of write them in there uh, so you can see. So let's look at this first one over here on the left. Okay, 74 degrees is labeled and the upper part is labeled B. So first of all, we need to identify the relationship. What is the relationship between these two angles? They're vertical. So that means they have the same measure. So B is also 74 degrees. Okay? Uh, let me label these. One, two, three, four. Okay? So let's look at the one that I have labeled number two. What's the relationship between those two angles? Vertical. So that means that B in this case is 33 degrees. If you can't see that, it's a 33 degrees right there. Okay, three and four are both what kind of relationship? Linear pair. So when we add them together, we should get 180 degrees. So 54 degrees plus B is equal to 180 degrees. So we subtract it from 180, and what do we get? 126. All right, I finally found something y'all are kind of excited about. Okay, how about number four? What's that missing? 89, okay, awesome. I will take the enthusiasm. Okay, so let's make it just a little bit more difficult. Okay, let's throw some variables in there. Same premise, vertical angles, they're equal to each other, but now we have to solve an equation. 6x plus 4 is equal to 46. Okay, if you can't see those measurements, it's 6x plus 4 on the bottom, 46 is the angle on the top. Okay, so we got to solve for x. What do we do first? Subtract 4. 
So 6x is equal to 42. Divide by 6, so x is 7. Okay, now 7 is not the, the measurement of the angle. We know that the whole angle is 46 degrees, so we just want to find the value of x there. When x is 7, that's going to make that be 46 degrees. Okay? Now for b, that's a linear pair. So we have to add those two together, 6x plus 2 plus x minus 4, and those two added together will give us 180 degrees. So we've got to combine like terms on the left side first. 6x plus x is 7x. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Now we can solve it like we just solved the last equation. Add 2 to both sides. 7x is equal to 182. Divide by 7. 26, thank you. 26 is x. Okay, so let's practice, okay? But what is true about parallel lines? They never touch, they never intersect is the mathematical term for it, okay? They never intersect, okay? A transversal line, okay, a transversal line is a line that intersects parallel lines. So what I've got on your paper there, or yeah, there on your paper, um, a lot of times we use this notation to indicate parallel lines. You will see arrows in the middle, well not really in the middle, but not at the end of the line, so I've drawn them in purple. That indicates that those two lines are parallel to each other, okay? And then this line right here is the transversal. So those parallel lines are never going to intersect, but they've got this transversal line that's cutting through them, and there's some properties that are created, there's some angles that are created that have some special properties. So what I want you to do with the, uh, that I have on your paper, corresponding angles are in the same position relative to a parallel line in the transversal, and so they have the same measure. So on your diagram there, uh, on your blue paper, I want you to identify there are four pairs of corresponding angles. Alternate interior, the name is in, uh, or to figure out the relationship, it's in the name. Alternate means opposite, and interior means inside okay so uh, the blanks there are inside parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal so um, let's use the wax paper to figure out what the relationship is between their measure okay so first of all tell me uh, a number and a letter that would be considered alternate interior angles on your blue paper. On your blue paper, tell me a number and a letter that would be considered alternate interior angles. They do have the same measure because, tell me this, when you slide A, B, C, and D down on 1, 2, 3, and 4, what's the relationship between those angles that we identified as alternate interior? They're vertical, okay? If we put that top parallel line on top of the bottom one, then those two angles are vertical angles, and then the vertical angles have the same measure. So that's why alternate interior angles have the same measure. Okay, let's look at another relationship. Same side interior. Okay, so interior, they are inside our parallel lines, and they're on the same side of the transversal. So, what would we consider same side interior angles on our blue paper? 2 and C, 
and 1 and D, okay? They're on the same side of the transversal and they're inside of the parallel lines. So do the same thing. Slide your wax paper. Tell me what the relationship is. They equal 180. They form a linear pair when we slide it down. Okay, their sum is 180 degrees. Okay. So the reason why we're going through this is because I don't want to just give you this list of rules. I want them to make sense in your head. I want you to see, well, why do they add up to 180? Why do they have the same measure? Um, so hopefully the, the wax paper is helpful with that. Okay, we also have alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angles. So exterior means they are outside the parallel lines and they are on alternate or opposite sides of the transversal. So what pairs would be considered alternate exterior? A and 3 and B and 4. Okay, A and 3 and B and 4 would be alternate exterior. So slide your wax paper. What's the relationship between A and 3 and B and 4? A and 3, B and 4. When you slide your wax paper, what's the relationship there? They have the same measure. Those create vertical angles. They have the same measure. So here's an easy way to remember it. The alternate ones, if they're on opposite sides of the transversal, whether they're alternate interior or alternate exterior, they are the same. Okay? The alternates have the same measure. The same sides have a sum of 180. Okay, so the same side have a sum, a bunch of S's together. Uh, same side have the sum, and then the alternates have the same measure. Okay? So that's one way to kind of keep it straight there in your head. 